name is Beardo Cleaver, coming at you live from youtube.com slash Beardo Cleaver. Welcome back to my channel. Hope you're doing most excellent today. Today we are doing a PS3 game collection video. This is a video that I've been wanting to do for a long time. And for one reason or another, something always goes wrong. Either my cam runs out of juice, or memory, or other technical audio difficulties, what have you. But we're doing it. I've got about 50 games, so let's give her. And these are in no particular order. They might be alphabetical at some point, but that's intentional, but not, it doesn't have any bearing on the rank of the game. First game, Brutal Legend. Good game. I wish it was uh, straight up like hack and slash R RPG instead of like a uh, RTS that it turned out to be. In theory, I would like it. Like, it's got Jack Black as the main protagonist and awesome soundtrack with, like, classic metal songs. It's got Lemmy, Rob Halford, I think, uh, Chris Jericho, I think. Uh, yeah, lots of, like, popular metal musicians. But I'm not a big RTS fan. Uh, so yeah, I wish it was more straight up just hack and slash, but it is a game I haven't finished yet, but uh, it's on the list. Fallout New Vegas. Great game. Uh, takes place in and around New Vegas. Um, so it's kind of got like a cowboy vibe to it. Uh, I didn't like it that much at first. When it first came out, but after playing Red Dead Redemption 2, I got more into it. It's got some awesome DLC and some st that I still haven't beaten yet. And that's on the list of DLC to beat. Borderlands Game of the Year Edition. Ah, it's a first person shooter. It was okay. Not really into it for long periods of time. Like, it got really redundant. And the story was pretty much non-existent. And the ending of the story was a huge letdown. It basically was anticlimactic. And it set up Borderlands 2. Uh, but it's fun for like, you know, an hour or half hour at a time. Uh, basically shoot bad guys to get better guns to shoot more stronger bad guys with. And they drop better guns and so on. Lego Lord of the Rings. Fun game. Uh, never beat it. It's on the list. Uh, and you play as like different party members of the Fellowship of the Ring uh, on their quest to, uh, I guess, bring the, the ring back to to uh, Mount Doom to destroy it. It's on the list to play. Yeah, and, and each party member has like a, a different uh, uh, strength and different tactics and different special moves that, that you can use to uh, traverse the levels and solve puzzles and stuff like that. So that was really cool. Uncharted 3. Drake's Deception. Great game. Uh, I thought it suffered from pacing issues at some points. But high quality uh, third person action adventure platforming. Great voice acting and motion capture. I would say Naughty Dog is probably the best when it comes to that sort of stuff. Like Uncharted and especially uh, The Last of Us. Can't be beat. Number one. Dead Island. First person uh, zombie shooter melee action adventure open world. Takes place in a tropical island. Uh, I remember this came out in like 2012, I think, maybe 2011. And I was working at EB Games at that time, which is. Uh, like GameStop basically and uh, the day this game came out the store was packed all day long lineups snaking all throughout the store throughout the store and by the time you, you like five or six o'clock rolled around we were sold out it was that popular that we sold nothing but this game that day it was great EA Sports Active 2 this is a uh, workout game, an exercise game. It came with like 
heart rate monitors that you attach to your arms and your legs. Uh, it was fun for a bit when I was into like working out with video games. Uh, basically, it's like you're running on the spot or stretching and stuff like that with a virtual trainer, personal trainer on the screen in front of you. And they give you different instructions for when you're like running on the spot, for example, either run with your knees higher up or jumping jacks or walk or whatever. That was fun for a bit, I guess. Dark Souls 2. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, third person action adventure, really difficult RPG. Uh, good game, but probably my least favorite of the Dark Souls Bloodborne Sekiro series. Uh, because it's not directed by Hidetaki Miyazaki, who directed Dark Souls 1, 3, and Bloodborne. Uh, it just feels different. Like, it's... Your character moves slower, and... The world isn't as, like, interconnected as Dark Souls. And... It just feels... It feels the most unlike any of the other Dark Souls games. Yeah. And it's still good. Like, I had fun playing it. But it doesn't measure up to Dark Souls 1, that's for sure. Star Wars The Force Unleashed. It's the ultimate st Sith edition steel book. Uh, third person hack and slash action adventure, I want to say. Never beat it. I want to now that I'm slowly getting into Star Wars again. Not again, but for the first time. Uh, comes with a collectible card. This is Darth Maul. Where's his favorite place to shop? At the mall. Card 9 of 10. Uh, so yeah, this is on the list of games I want to play. And if I like it, which I probably will, I'll probably pick up that new Star Wars game. Uh, I'm not going to even try to remember the, the title of it. Resistance 3. Made by Insomniac Games, the company that made me want to buy a PS2 back in the day. First person shooter. Uh, you're battling uh, these alien creatures called Chimera. And the cool thing about the Resistance series is that, like the Ratchet and Clank series, you use guns that are kind of unorthodox and uh, unique. And the more you use them, you get upgrades to them or more more special abilities or whatever so they get better that's a really cool feature of of resistance the orange box uh this is a game from a friend actually uh it comes with half-life 2 episode 2 team fortress 2 portal half-life 2 episode 1 as well and i think just half-life 2 as well uh, I've only played Portal, but great value. Uh, yeah, what is that? Four or five games? Uh, and once I beat Half-Life 1 on the PS2, I'm going to start Half-Life 2. Yeah, there you go. Dark Souls. Oh my god. Great game. One of my favorite games. Uh, third person action RPG hack and slash. But it's from what you've heard, probably really challenging. Uh, yeah, this this is my favorite. Because it's the first one I played. It's the first one I beat. It's open world. Well, not really open world. It's not really sandbox, but it's, it's open world. Um, so from, like, the, the main hub, Firelink Shrine, uh, you can go, I think, five different directions to start off the game. And that means you can get so many more different opportunities for playstyles and to get equipped in a good way early on. Like, you can go the intended way up to the Undead Berg. You can go through the graveyard to the catacombs, pick up the Zweihander on the way, perhaps. You can go down to New Londo Ruins and get the uh, Firekeeper Soul. You can go down to Blighttown. Maybe even beat Quelana first before the Bell Gargoyles. 
or you can go down to the Valley of the Drakes and go around uh, Undead Burg and Undead Parish and bypass fighting Taurus Demon. So yeah, that's it really makes for interesting playthroughs and challenge runs and just keeping it interesting because you're not going to say you're not going to High Wall of Lothric and then Undead Settlement. Yeah, so it's it's a lot more open-ended that way. And like like most Souls games, at least Demon Souls and Dark Souls, it took me a couple of years and a few attempts to get into it and to actually like sit down and progress through it and get better. But once I did, I think for the time I I uh, committed myself to beating it and by the time I got the Platinum, it was like two months. So yeah, great game, one of my favorites. Jack and Daxter Collection. This has Jack and Daxter, the Precursor Legacy, Jack 2 and Jack 3. Uh, this is a re-release of the games that came out on PS2. And the first one, Jack and Daxter Precursor Legacy, I remember I rented it from a video store when those things still existed. Uh, I heard nothing about it before, and I rented it s solely based on the cover art and the story. Really charming, uh, open world, uh, third person platformer. Um, yeah, and it, it's open world, which is was really kind of rare, I think, for, for games at that time. Because, well, you had like Grand Theft Auto. And that was really cool to just just have like no loading screens except when you fast travel or whatever um jack 2 was a lot more oppressive because it took place mainly in a city called haven city and i think that one really took inspiration from from grand theft auto because you could uh finally drive vehicles and have racing missions and stuff like that but the thing about Haven City and it being oppressive was that it was divided up into districts and areas basically and it was quite a challenge and a pain sometimes to get through them uh, because it was really winding and linear like it was really only one or two ways to get from from the start of one part to the other and so you had to go from zone A to D. For the most part, you couldn't really go straight there. You had to go through B and C as well. And that was not really fun at some points. But now later that I've got a bit more experience playing video games, it's it's not that bad. But it was, it was a challenge. But still, still fun and good. And Jack 3, I think, took place for the most part in like a desert from what I remember it's been a long time since I played that one and back to Haven City but I think Haven City in the third game was a bit more opened up yeah uh, Saints Row 4 this is not my game this is a friend's game uh, <laughs> uh, takes place in the same area same city as the third game uh, but I couldn't get into this one quite as much because it felt too similar because of that fact. And, uh, yeah, I never beat it. Uh, but it ended up feeling a bit like Infamous because your character gets superpowers. So you could f jump and fly from building to building and cars kind of become obsolete. Uh, so I should give this back to him. <laughs> Diablo 3. Uh kind of over-the-top RPG hack-and-slash dungeon crawler. Uh, this was a friend's copy. I I lent him my copy of Grand Theft Auto San Andreas, the special edition, which came with the bonus DVD, and he lent me this. And when it came time to return them, he said, keep it. So I'm like, well, okay, thank you. Uh, played for a little bit, never beat it, but I want to. Maybe I'll pick up the Eternal Collection for the PS4 that has the game and all the DLC with it too, just to get the full up-to-date experience. 
Batman Arkham City. Uh, never beat this game. Uh, I want to. Still on the list. But I think it's because of the fact that I started it right after Arkham Asylum. And maybe I was burnt out by the time I finished Arkham Asylum. And the UI felt too mechanical, if that makes sense. And maybe too overwhelming at first because you're thrust into an open world. Which is quite different from being in Arkham Asylum, which is still open, but it's like in an enclosed area. Uh, so it's still on the list, along with Arkham Knight, which I think was free on PlayStation Plus a while ago. So yeah, gotta play it. Sly Cooper Collection. With Sly Cooper and the Thievius Raccoon, and Sly 2 Band of Thieves, and Sly 3 Honor Among Thieves. Uh, this is a re-release from the PS2 games. Uh, kind of like... Uh, Jack and Daxter lumped in to the same kind of demographic and appeal. Uh, this is more cell shaded Maybe a bit more kid-friendly. Uh, very charming. I, I really liked the first one. That was a fun game to play. Easy Platinum. Uh, haven't played much of Sly 2. And I don't think I've ever played Sly 3. But I should get on that. Yeah, very nostalgic and fun. Dead Space, oh my god. Uh, I remember being turned on to this game by the same friend who lent me Saints Row 4. And we couldn't stop talking about this for like months after it came out. We still talk about it occasionally. Uh, it's a third person survival horror in space. Uh, really influenced by Resident Evil 4. But in this game you can walk while firing a gun. Unlike... Resident Evil 4. And you're fighting these things called... Necromorphs? Yeah, Necromorphs. Uh, really, like, edge of your seat, tense gameplay. And you're not playing as, like, a soldier or a marine. You're playing as a, an engineer. And he uses... Uh, unconventional weapons to... dismember aliens, basically. And Necromorphs. So you could like cut off their their feet, their legs, their arms. And yeah, it's just one of my one of my favorite PS3 games. Definitely a highlight. Dead Space 2. Another one of my favorites. Uh, I found this one a bit more colorful visually than Dead Space 1. Uh, a bit more action-packed, but still very tense and claustrophobic and and going back to the, I think it's called the Ishimura, the ship that the first game takes place in, and it's it's like covered in kind of crime tape and sterile coverings. You know, <laughs> bad things have happened there. You get PTSD. Uh, this one has a few jump scares and few set pieces that still stick with me as highlights in my gaming. Uh, life. Yeah, so I would put this just right along Dead Space 1 as as uh, a favorite. Dead Space 3. Uh, this one was good. It's not as, not as great as Dead Space 1 or 2. Uh, took place somewhat on like a snowy planet. And the way they changed this up was they added microtransactions. And they got rid of different kinds of ammo. And they added the ability to customize your own guns. Like, for example, have a flamethrower with a shotgun or a minigun with a rocket launcher or whatever. And that was kind of cool, I guess. But I liked the kind of... The set path of having only five or six weapons to choose from. Because it made it feel more... Uh, survivalish, like you're you're not uh, you're not plowing your way through through aliens because you're not a uh, soldier. But I guess by the time the third game rolls around, you're you have a bit more experience. Uh, what I didn't, what I really didn't like was the 
the combination of the ammo types into one one unit just called ammo. And I thought that made for um it was just it allowed for more weapon variety, I guess, but when you're used to uh, getting through fights with just like one round left in the previous two games and in this one where you still have you know stacks of ammo left it made it feel less urgent and less serious like your life didn't depend on it and you're gonna be okay which I don't think should be a factor in uh, in survival horror games uh, and this game added co-op too uh not LAN, I think, but, you know, online play. Co-op through the main story. And I played through it with a buddy of mine. I was playing the the second player. And at, at a few parts, I, I experienced different things than he did. Like, for example, we were in an elevator standing together. And I, I saw and heard, like, hallucinogenic images and just tripped out visuals and he didn't and I was asking him man are you seeing this shit it's awesome and he's like no what are you talking about so yeah if you if you want to play it I recommend it along with the whole Dead Space trilogy I wish they would either re-release these on PS4 as a, like a remastered collection or just release a Dead Space 4 that'd be amazing The Elder Scrolls 4 Oblivion. It's 4 right there. IV. They zoom in on it, on it, on the title screen, and they zoom out. Uh, this game, not this particular edition, but this game was one of the first games I bought uh, when I bought my PS3. The other was Resistance, Fall of Man. Uh, this was the first open world RPG that I ever played. And I loved it because you can create your own character. You can customize their look, customize their name, customize their backstory, go wherever you want, do whatever you want. Uh, so many hours put into this game. Uh, many factions you can join. The Mages Guild, Fighters Guild, Thieves Guild, uh, the Dark Brotherhood, Assassin's Guild. There's an arena, like a gladiator arena, which I wish to God Skyrim had. Uh... You can create your own spells. You can enchant your own gear. The soundtrack is great. Yeah, it's, it's one of my favorite moments in gaming. Just like figuring out the game for the first time. Like this was the first game I played that had fast travel and I had no idea about fast travel. So I remember walking from uh, the time you exit the sewers from the tutorial all the way to Kvatch, where the main quest proceeds to. And I could have fast traveled, but I didn't know how to. <laughs> That's just one of the many memories of this game. Great game, great game. Beyond Two Souls, starring Ellen Page and I think Willem Dafoe, too. Yeah, made by Quantic Dream. This is like a. Uh, interactive movie where you're not moving your character in the traditional sense like a third person game or first person uh, you're basically uh, reacting to quick time events and button prompts on the screen and and making choices and those choices affect the rest of the game so for example you could accidentally or intentionally kill someone and that'll affect the rest of the game because they might not have their own uh, particular scenes show up because they're dead or whatever uh, I didn't like this one as much as Heavy Rain made by the same company but still good I've only beaten it once uh, but I do want to give it another shot on PS3 and I think it's on PS4 as well Rocksmith good idea uh, for people who don't play guitar uh, but for someone like me who plays guitar already this is kind of uh Unintuitive, and I think they go about it the wrong way because they don't really 
teach you about rhythm or the notes. They just kind of tell you where to put your finger on the fretboard. And that's cool, I guess, if that's all you want to know, but they should have found a way, I think, to add, to teach some, some theory as well and stuff like that. But yeah, um, I had fun just jamming along with it and noodling around. And I haven't played it in a long time, but I still want to play it and stream it once in a while just to just have some fun and jam. Speaking of jam, this is Shadows of the Damned. Uh, third person kind of shooter, I think. It's been a long time since I played it. Uh, kind of like Devil May Cry, I guess. Kind of the same vibe as that. Never beat it. But uh, I want to still. It's a twisted psychological action thriller from the nightmare team of uh, Suda51, Shinji Mikami, and Akira Yamaoka. Uh, so yeah, it's on the list. I want to play it. And this is the game that I was talking about the last time I tried this video. And I was filming on my phone. And my phone automatically cut the, the segments, or the, the whole segment, into two. I was talking about this game. So it's cursed, I tell you. Cursed. Modern Warfare 2. Call of Duty. Modern Warfare 2. I think this is the one with the no Russian mission where you're posing as a terrorist shooting up a airport. Uh, I'm not a big fan of Call of Duty overall. Uh, first person shooter if you haven't known. Probably do know though. Uh, yeah, kind of unmemorable to me because I'm not a big fan of it, I guess. But yeah, it was alright. Have no real desire to play it anymore, except maybe for that no Russian mission every once in a while. Just for the just for the experience or whatever, but yeah, there you go. Grand Theft Auto 5. This is the Steelbook edition that came with the Collector's Edition. Uh, that comes with a map, a full-size map, and an actual uh, instruction manual. Great game. A lot better than GTA 4, in my opinion, because it kind of brings back the fun and the customization and the over-the-topness of the classic PS2 GTA games. And for the first time, you're playing as three different characters, and you can switch off between them uh, more or less freely between missions. You play as either Franklin Clinton, Trevor Phillips, or... Michael DeSanta. And it's just cool to see how the relationship between them evolves. And they're they're totally three different characters too. Like they they have different uh motivations and just they behave differently and it's it's fun to like play the game from that perspective. Like what would this guy do? What would this guy do? There's not any choices in the game, but like in Free Room, for example, it's it makes a lot more sense to uh, to go on a rampage as Trevor than, say, Franklin, for example. But yeah, fun game, great game. And uh, it's getting more and more difficult to tell uh, satire from real life in this day and age uh, because real life is ridiculous now. And it makes you wonder what they're going to do next to uh, to keep up with the satire and parody. And I really hope the next game will be Grand Theft Auto Vice City. VI6 Vice City. If they don't do it, I burn everything. <laughs> next game. This is Metal Gear Solid 4 Guns of the Patriots. This is the limited edition. Comes in a nice little box comes with the game and a bonus disc bonus package with two discs it's uh the soundtrack and it's a limited edition bonus disc i don't know what's on that bonus disc i don't think i've ever watched it i think it's uh behind the scenes stuff uh but yeah really great game high production 
by Hideo Kojima, uh, recent creator of Death Stranding. Uh, this is the first Metal Gear Solid game that I've played. This one here. And uh, it's infamous for its in-depth cutscenes and lengthy cutscenes because they're almost like little movies or TV series, TV episodes. They're like, you know, 15, 20 minutes, half hour long. And they just go from tangent to tangent. They explain everything. And I think the last cutscene in the game took like an hour and a half. And I was playing this at the time when I had to get up early for work. And it just kept going on and on and on. And I was just hoping for it to end because I wanted to go to sleep. So I could get up well rested for the work for work tomorrow morning. The next morning. Uh, but yeah. <laughs> that didn't happen. Uh, but great game. I do want to play it again. Now that it has trophies on PS3. Borderlands 2. Uh, first person shooter. Uh, first person looter. I guess looter shooter. A bit better than first one has a bit more of a story um and an antagonist handsome jack um so yeah it's a bit more fun than the first one but yeah it's still one of those games that i can only find myself playing for an hour or so at a time because it's kind of uh one-sided not generic just one-sided because you're just basically shooting enemies to get better guns to shoot stronger enemies with to get better guns and so on in my opinion of course elder scrolls 5 skyrim this is the copy that came with my collector's edition which came with a statue of alduin uh just again so much fun uh almost as good as oblivion like if oblivion was here skyrim is like here uh the only thing that keeps it from being that uh exact and that similar is the lack of the uh gladiator gladiator arena and um the customization of spells that's pretty much it everything else is is comparable like huge open world a nordic world at that uh cool lore and you know customize your character all that good stuff go anywhere see anything be anything do anything you want uh probably spent just as much time playing this as oblivion and i'm still playing it to this day once in a while with mods on ps4 now which is even better make it look better make it play better get more loot that kind of stuff so i love it what we got here batman arkham asylum uh, third person stealth game, I guess you could say. Playing as Batman. And it's 3D, so it comes with 3D glasses. Yeah. <laughs> uh, really fun. Uh, reminds me of like a Halloween game too, because it's really colorful. And the characters just remind me of Halloween. So I, I much prefer this one to Batman Arkham City. This is the Journey Collector's Edition. Comes with Journey and Flow and Flower. Uh, never played Flow or Flower, but I've played Journey a few times. Maybe two or three times. Really unique, uh, charming game. Uh, it's like a third person kind of platformer action adventure. Uh, really short. You can beat it in like two hours or so. And uh, it's kind of open co-op too where you might see another character who looks like this join you, but there's no way to communicate with that person or know who it, who it is because their online name doesn't show up above them. Uh, so the only way, the only moves you have are basically moving, you know, freely left and right forward backwards diagonally jumping and uh i think pressing circle to beep and yeah that's it so there's nothing beyond that and i was playing co-op with a buddy of mine a few years ago and <laughs> we wanted to 
make sure that we were playing with who we thought we were. So we were talking on the phone at the same time, and we're like, okay, I'm jumping now. I'm running around you in a circle now. Is that you? Yep, that's you. Okay, cool. Good to know. It's you. It's me. Uh, so yeah, you, it's, you're going through a whole bunch of different uh, locations from like a desert to an underground cavern hiding from a dragon uh, through a snowy mountaintop with extreme blizzard conditions. Uh, yeah, great game. Great game. Minecraft. Uh, open world. Uh, kind of sandboxy. Create your own world type of thing. Yeah, it's it's really chill. Great music. Um, like the title says, you can either mine for low, uh, for materials and minerals and stuff like that, or craft and use that stuff that you picked up mining to craft stuff. Uh, so I, it's been a while since I played it, but when I did play it, I had fun. And it's just fun to just kind of get lost in the game, explore, and create better armor. See where those caverns go in the uh, in the mountains. And yeah, I still want to play this sometime and get really into it. Ratchet and Clank. Future. A crack in time. Uh, this is the series that made me want to buy a PS2. The first game, Ratchet and Clank. And this one is cool because um, it deals with time and you play as, for the most part, Ratchet, but sometimes as the robot, Clank. And his missions were really interesting because you can use uh, doubles or copies of himself to solve puzzles based on time and rhythm and stuff like that, from what I remember. So that was a really cool, uh, not gimmick, but part of it, yeah. And I still want to beat it, or I, I've beaten it, but I want to play it again because I like it. Call of Duty Black Ops. This is probably my favorite Call of Duty uh, campaign uh, because like I said, I don't really play the multiplayer that much. Uh, this one deals with like split personality and schizophrenia and brainwashing and stuff like that. And I really got into that. Reminded me of the game Manhunt. Uh, for that reason, kind of a it, tur it really turns like into a kind of like a psych psychological thriller, I guess. So yeah, this the story got better as you played it. Uh, so yeah, this is my favorite Call of Duty, I would say. Mortal Kombat, the complete edition, uh, fighting game, classic. Probably my favorite fighting game of all time. I'm not a big fighting game fan now, but spent some time playing this one. Had a, had a blast. Uh, went to a Mortal Kombat party with some friends, and I think I think it was me who came in second place, and I lost to a guy who had never played before. He was playing as Scorpion, spamming nothing but <laughs> the get over here move, and the move where you fly back through like. If he's player two, you fly back through the right hand of the screen, and then you appear on the left hand side of the screen, punching, and he beat me that way. <laughs> but yeah, great game. Great game. So much fun. Uh, spent hours playing this game. Grand Theft Auto 4 and Episodes from Liberty City. This has the base game GTA 4. The Lost and Damned, and The Ballad of Gay Tony. So this is the base game. This is Lost and Damned, The Ballad of Gay Tony. And it's kind of... It's the same story, just told from three different perspectives. Kind of like GTA V, but you can't switch off between them throughout the story. You're, it's this three separate experiences. Um, and the cool thing about the base game is that it's the first one released on PS3. Uh, so you're just as new to this new technology and new city, Liberty City, as our boy, Nico Bellic. So you're learning how to play the game just as he's learning how to 
drive in a new city, for example. And uh, that's what I liked about that, but it was also the least fun of the GTA games because it had a lot less customization and less mini games and less like over the topness of the previous ones. Uh, a really heartbreaking story too, filled with kind of moral dilemmas. And there's a choice late in late game that is really tragic because no matter what you choose, uh, someone uh, or you experience the loss of someone close to you. Uh, so that's really sad. Um, and the Lost and Damned, you play as a motorcycle club, I think, vice president, dealing with the fact that his president uh, has come back from jail and the drama and the uh, the backstabbing gun that goes with that. And the Ballad of Gay Tony, you play as Tony's assistant, I think, called Luis. And Tony is like a, a nightclub owner. And so they all take place in Liberty City, but um, yeah, the, uh, the Ballad of Gay Tony is a lot more colorful in mission and in UI as well, like the HUD. And the missions are more fun, they're more over the top. Uh, so it's not just your straight up, like, retrieval missions or, uh, go here, kill this guy, come back and whatnot. They're more varied and fun, involving parachuting and boats and craziness, yeah. <laughs> the Last of Us. Uh, this is the Steelbook Edition that came with the Special Edition. I got this on release day. It was a Friday. And I spent all weekend playing it. And I was finished it by Monday, I think. Great game. One of my favorites. Very, very... Uh, s sad story, but also... Um, heartwarming, because... You could see the uh, the evolution in the relationship between Ellie and Joel. It goes from basically strangers to almost, well, I would say father-daughter because Joel has lost his daughter early in the game. And I guess he's reluctant to... Um, well, he's still, he's still hurting about the loss, but he... I guess, develops feelings for Ellie as a daughter. And it's just cool to see that relationship blossom and evolve. That's yeah, really sweet. And like I said earlier about the Uncharted games, the motion capture and uh, voice acting is top notch. Like it, it's the best, basically. Nobody better in my opinion. It's basically movie quality. Well, not, not not exactly movie quality, but yeah, it's, it's the best, basically. And I can't wait for The Last of Us 2 because I'm going to play this, stream it like the week before that, and then come the midnight launch, I'm going to play The Last of Us 2. Doom 3, the BFG edition. This has Doom 1 and 2 included as well, I believe. Uh, yeah, never really got into Doom. Like, I played a bit of it. First-person shooter. Um, but I want to. I want to at least beat Doom 3. Actually, no, I take that back. I did beat Doom 2016, and that was fun. But, yeah. Uh, fighting demonic aliens, I guess. Uh, yeah, so I, I at least want to finish Doom 3. Heavy Rain. Who is the origami killer? Is it you? <laughs> uh, yeah, another game that I bought on release day. And I finished it that weekend. Uh, and I couldn't wait to see who the origami killer was. And of course, by that time that it was revealed, it blew my mind. Uh, and I think I'm one trophy away from getting the platinum on this. So yeah, it plays like an interactive movie. Uh, you play as four different characters here. You play as... I forget their names. But there's like a private investigator, uh, a reporter, and the father of the, 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 the son, or one of the boys who got killed. 
Actually, no, this guy's a FBI agent, I think. And then this guy's a private investigator. Yeah. And like in Beyond Two Souls, I think more in this game, um, your decisions affect the rest of the game because the first time I played this, I accidentally got her killed off. And that deleted two or three scenes from her storyline later on in the game. Uh, so I do want to get that trophy and get the platinum. Finally. Demon Souls. Uh, the kind of spiritual seek precursor, prequel to Dark Souls. Uh, same idea, very challenging. Third person RPG hack and slash. And this is the first game I played out of that whole series. And it took me a while to get into it because it was really challenging. It still is challenging. And I played it a lot like God of War at the time, just not being careful and not learning from my mistakes. But now I know how to play these games for the most part, and I play them to chill out sometimes. Uh, so this is not my favorite of of the three or four. I would I would put the list as like Dark Souls one, Dark Souls three, this, and then Dark Souls two. So yeah, still still a good game, still a very good experience, and I got the platinum on this too. Dishonored. Uh, first person kind of stealthy shooter if you want it to be <laughs> I've tried multiple times to get into this game three or four times and I always stop at around the same spot uh, I don't know why I do want to finish it but maybe it's the the way the characters look or something they look kind of exaggerated facially facial wise uh, takes place in like a, I think a New England whaling town uh, played by rats and stuff like that so yeah it's on the list of games I want to play and want to finish Fallout 3 game of the year edition amazing game great game again one of my tops one of my tops uh, I knew from like the first 30 seconds of playing this game that it'd be a classic because it starts with your birth and you get to choose your your sex or your gender your name your looks everything and it ends with your death basically if you don't have the DLC um, made by the same guys who made the Elder Scrolls Oblivion and Skyrim Bethesda you might have heard of them uh, <laughs> uh, takes place in and around Washington DC called the Capital Wasteland and yeah, I spent just as much time playing this as, say, Oblivion or Skyrim. But it's with guns and uh, power armor. So it's like a post-apocalyptic uh, RPG. Uh, great game. Red Dead Redemption 2. Not uh, 2. 1. 1. What am I talking about? This is the Game of the Year edition. It comes with Undead Nightmare as well. So much fun. Uh, again, one of my favorite games on PS3. Um, the story is tragic in the end because you're playing as John Marston here who's basically working for the government, doing chores for them with the illusion of getting pardoned for his past crimes, I guess. But of course, that never comes. And it's basically about family and... Uh, trying to better yourself and accepting your mistakes and uh, redeeming yourself, basically. Red Dead Redemption. Yeah, great game. God of War. Uh, Ascension. Yeah, this is the Steelbook Edition. I uh, couldn't really get into this one, although I would call myself a God of War fan. It just felt like uh, they weren't really trying anymore because this was like the fourth or fifth God of War by the time this came out. And it just felt uninspired to me. So I never beat it, but I still want to play it eventually. And beat it eventually. <clears throat> Rage. This is the Anarchy Edition. First person shooter, uh, kind of in a post apocalyptic uh, world, not unlike 
Fallout or Borderlands. But yeah, I never really got into this one. I never beat it, but I want to yet, maybe. Uh, just felt generic and yeah, nothing memorable about it because I was playing Fallout and Borderlands around this time, so maybe everyone was burnt out by all that post-apocalyptica. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's on the list, maybe, of, of games to finish yet. Alright, just a few games left. Mafia 2. Great game. Great, great story. Uh, so if you like movies like Goodfellas or uh, like mobster movies, you're probably going to love this. Uh, takes place in, I think, two different time periods around World War II, I think, before it and after it. And it's basically a friendship story, from what I remember. Uh, open world, but not really sandbox. Um, and there's not many that there's not that many uh, side missions you can do either. Just collectible, like I think Playboy magazines are what it was, and like driving challenges and main story missions and stuff like that. But it was really high production value. Uh, good story. And I still want to play the third game that I have on PlayStation Plus for the PS4. And I think a few trophies away from getting the Platinum on this too, so that's that's on the list. L.A. Noir. Rockstar Games Presents. This is a third-person um, kind of open world. Again, you're playing as a detective solving crimes and mysteries uh i would say that this game has the best motion capture but it looks almost too unrealistic because the actors were told to really exaggerate their facial expressions and that makes it seem unnatural to me uh so you're playing as this guy i think his name was cole uh solving crimes and you have to like interrogate the suspects and guess and you have you have like choices when it comes to interrogating them you can accuse them you can question them more you can dismiss from what i remember um fun game i still want to play it again because there was one mission where i kept dying over and over again uh <laughs> i was like running from a bulldozer i think and i just kept on dying uh, so there's an option to like skip through that scene because you keep on dying but that I did that and it also skipped through the next cutscene so I missed a part of the story so I want to play through it again just to just to uh, get that story that I missed Metal Gear Solid the HD collection this has Metal Gear Solid 2 Sons of Liberty Metal Gear Solid 3 Snake Eater and Metal Gear Solid Peace Walker. Peace 2. Uh, I've only played Metal Gear Solid 2 out of this collection. Uh, but yeah, hugely influential to the gaming world. I'd still want to play all of them. And I only played the second one up to the point where uh, you no longer play a snake. So maybe that's what turned me off about it. But yeah, it's on the list of games to play. Last game. God of War Saga. Five full games. This is God of War 1, 2, 3. And Chains of Olympus and Ghost of Sparta. Those last two were PSP games. Loved God of War 1. That was one of my favorite PS2 games. Uh, as, as good as the sequels are, I don't think they were necessary, honestly. Like, it, it would have been a lot better... If they just left it as it is, as one game. Uh, sure, the other games were good and fun for the most part, but yeah, like it was kind of unnecessary in my opinion. Uh, yeah, very, very fun, and I still haven't beaten the two PSP games, Chains of Olympus and Ghost of Sparta, but it's on the list. All right, that is my PS3 game collection video. Thanks for watching. Nemo.